Hello game developers, it's me, Titan Hex, back with another tutorial. So this time we're going to be learning about skills in the database. All you have to do is just open up your database and uh, you can start doing some of this stuff yourself. We're going to get into it after I go over two special skills. So the two special skills are 0001 and 0002. So 0001, whenever you use an attack in battle, it's going to use this skill automatically. Now that makes it really nice because that we can manipulate the formula and we can come up with our own RPG centric formula for this. We can do some pretty cool things using that. The only thing we really have to worry about when messing with 0001 is the formula. If you change any of this other stuff, it might have undesirable effects, but sometimes you might want to do something really special. So you can always keep in mind that the attack Basic attack can be manipulated however you see fit. And you can do some cool stuff there. Next, we move on to the defend, otherwise known as um, guard. So normally it's guard, but I messed with this a little bit earlier uh, and changed it to defend because I just like defend better. That's what I'm used to, and I'm sure you guys agree with me. So the way defend works is because it has a 2000 speed down here, it goes before all other skills so the first thing you're gonna do is guard if you pick guard as your skill now it applies the state known as guard and that is right here and it just creates a flag let's see states flag guard so I was also playing with this I'll probably just remove that there we go so guard applies a special flag called guard and it lasts only for one turn so the special flag guard makes damage go down and that's all based on a trait over here the special parameter trait called guard effect so the rate at which you guard that the effectiveness of your guarding ability can be summed up right here so if we want to we could also go down to state and create our own guard state so maybe guarding applies only a physical defense. So if we went over here and we looked at let's see element rate, we can make physical only 50%. So we take 50% less damage from physical attacks and we can make our guard work like that. We could also make it work like, so let's see parameter, no extra parameter. We can go down to, oh, this might actually be a special. Yeah, it's a special parameter. Uh, the physical damage rate you could change it to 50 percent you only take 50 percent damage from uh physical hits so keep that in mind there's different things we could do to change it we can also add a magical guard and then like another thing called physical guard we'd have to play with that a little bit but cool things we can do using that now they have a whole bunch of basic skills already set up for us which is really nice we can use these as examples or we can just get rid of the whole thing and come up with our own this is a good starting point it's up to you to come up with more though so there's two other ones in here called the escape and the weight so the weight does nothing weight is mainly something you put on an enemy and it just makes them wait makes it way easier to fight the enemy um, then you have escape and you can make it so monsters can try to run or flee from you we usually will set those up in the enemy's action parameters. We'll set up maybe a wait. He waits half the time he's fighting, or he tries to escape when his HP is less than 25%. So we could always set something up like that. And those little guys are really useful to sort of get your brain humming and just come up with cool things. We're going to change the maximum from 10 to 14, just like I had. Uh, well, just like we're gonna do now. And we're gonna come up with some skills. And as I come up with skills, I'm gonna go ahead and run through the settings here, the damage and everything that you'll be looking at. So the name's pretty self-explanatory. We'll come up with a skill called Triple Strike. And we'll throw on a nice icon. You can go download more icons off the internet, uh, buy some, you can try and find some for free and you can also commission somebody or try and do them yourself there's different ways you can get more icons these are the basics that they give you so it's gonna work 
let's see, strike three times, but at 50% damage. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the none category. We don't want it to be in the magic category because if we go into our magic skill set, we don't want to see triple strike. We want to see something magical. The MP cost, that's up to you. Some of your skills might require MP. I'm going to make this one cost TP. I'm going to make it cost 10 TP. Nah, we'll make it easier. 5 TP. It's going to be able to strike one enemy. So TP, let's go into TP real quick. S TP is used for a bunch of skills. You can make any skill use TP. But the way TP works is your... You, the way when you use skills and when you defend and guard and attack and all that and use all these different skills tp rises and then you can make it so tp costs tp costs skills exist and it makes it so that later on in the game you are f using skills later on so for long drawn out battles you'll use tp skills uh, but for just general skills you'll just attack you can also make it whether you can choose whether or not it's persistent. So right here, wait, let's see. Hmm. If you, I'm assuming if you have a plugin, you can make it so that TP is persistent and doesn't go away after you end a battle. So normally TP ends the, when the battle ends, your TP returns back to zero. Next we have skill type. And if I went into system, or is it no types, skill types, I can add more skill types. And these are just little sub menus that a character will get. And in those sub menus are skills. So you could have magic and you can switch that to black magic, to healing, to whatever you want, and then categorize each of these and make it so that only certain classes get those skills. It's pretty useful. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with that. A lot of organization and organizing it in certain ways can make it so certain skills are only accessible to certain classes. Uh, even if you are holding a weapon that teaches you that skill, only certain classes can use it because it'll only show up in certain menus that maybe a class won't have. Cool things like that you can totally do. So just setting up those, that's how you do it. Now occasion is basically where in the menu you can use it whether you can only use it on the field menu, which is menu screen, or whether you can only use it in battles, which is the battle screen, or you can use it in both places or never. So normally you're not gonna pick one with never. Uh, there's probably some special things you can do with that, but you're gonna find very limited uses. In this case, it's a battle only ability and it's only gonna be used in battle. The speed isn't a big deal. You can just change that however you feel. You can make them slower as well by going negative. Now, success rate is sort of tied into hit type. So if I choose the physical attack hit type, that means when I attack with this ability, it's going to take into account the enemy's evasion rate and my hit rate. If I use magical attack, it's going to take into account the enemy's magic evasion rate. And that determines whether or not my attack lands. However, I can add a success chance, and that success means that the skill might not even ever take place. And that's what you want to remember with success. It's good for applying stat special status effects or really like high risk skills, things like that all work. Repeat is how many times the skill will happen. So if I want him to attempt to strike the enemy three times, all I have to do is put three and he'll just hit one, two, three times. I can add a TP gain, but since it costs TP, I don't really want to add a gain. And I'll pick an animation. Slash effect should work. Uses, sli uses triple strike. I can also, or does triple strike, and I can even flavor this up and make it goes berserk and performs, and then it'll say triple strike. So I can really flavor up things and make them really unique. Now I can also apply a required weapon. By the way, this is just more lines if you want two lines. Um, good for flavor text. But right here, I can make it so only if I have a certain weapon equipped can I use this skill. I can make it so I can only use a staff. 
spear, glove, claw. They have staffs here, I thought. Guess not. Anyways, I can make it so... Oh, cane. I can make it so you can use a cane in battle and have special skills for the cane, but only if you have the cane equipped. HP damage. This right here is your... It's going to apply to the formula, but it's pretty simple. This is really self-explanatory how it works. Formula, I can put attack times four minus death times two. Now this isn't gonna work properly unless I use A dot and B dot. If I hover over this little text box, right over formula, it'll tell me some information about everything I can use. A is your is the uh, user and B is the target. So we're checking, we're multiplying the user's attack times four and removing the enemy's defense times two and that's going to give us the damage variance is basically how much off it is from the base number so if i have a variance of 20 percent and the damage is 100 it, the damage can be anywhere from 80 to 120 good to know you can make skills that are wildly have wild variance i can also apply critical hit so in this case i'm going to say yes you can use you can apply have a critical hit if it strikes properly element now this is kind of cool i can make it normal attack so the elements based off of the weapon that you're using if you have a water weapon it's going to apply water damage in this case i'm going to make it based off the weapon we're using now effects i'm going to go right into those we're going to just delve into that so effects are Recover HP, recover MP, regain TP, so I can make it so that I gain a flat amount of TP whenever I use the skill, which is in some ways kind of silly when you consider that you can already apply it over here, but it's useful for, it's mainly used in items. And I can also recover MP, recover HP, if I want to do those um, like 25 and 25, but no percent. Then I can do that. Uh, I just hit OK when I have them. And it'll recover 25 HP on the target. So this is always whatever the target is. I can also apply states. Remove states. Add buffs and debuffs. The way buffs work is it takes the base stat that the of the target that's being buffed. And increases it 25% and it stacks. I believe up to five times, but there's a there's a limit in the you can set it in the engine. There's a limit to how many times buffs stack. But they apply a buff and they stack the buff together. And this is how long it lasts. You can also add debuffs, works the same way, except it's removing that percentage. So then you have special effects. The only one is escape. We've already seen it here, it just makes you leave battle. Grow is more for items. It makes it so you gain a permanent amount this stat you obviously don't want to skill with it otherwise you can really cheese the game learn skill if i want i can make a skill that teaches me another skill and using common events i can make it so that maybe a skill teaches me a skill disappears and then after that skill has been used so many times it returns that old skill to me so then i can just have this special skill that i have to perform something and then i have access or even like a myriad of skills i can make it so that i have to study a book and then i'll learn these skills for a limited amount of time common event this is how we call up common events and they can do a ton of stuff to make our skill super unique i'll have to go into those with eventing it's not something we're going to learn right now next is the note so Obviously, plug in mainly, nothing to worry about. I'm going to quickly go over formula because I already started it. And then we're going to leave in, in the tutorial after I handle the formula. There unfortunately won't be enough time to cover item. But I'll be able to tackle items, weapons, and armors probably in one. Otherwise, I'll just split it down into, you know, its own little thing. But hopefully we get that far. Uh, I should have that tutorial up soon. Let's jump into the formula. So there's a ton of stuff we can do with a formula. And if you know a little bit of programming, you can really apply some pretty cool programming stuff to it. 
not only is there the formula for all these basic stats, but you can also add the special formula, uh, special traits if you if you know the abbreviation for the traits. So I can make it so that my hit rate determines my damage or my heal rate. My physical damage rate can affect my spells and abilities. Everything from regeneration to all of that can be applied. I can also mess with a whole bunch of other things uh, in the thing, uh, in the formula. I can apply some programming knowledge to this formula and make it so certain things happen. Uh, there is actually force actions. I can force characters or enemies to take an action. So I can make it so that uh, when I hit an enemy, they're forced to use a skill if they have it. Or it can even teach them the skill and then force them to have it. Those are like, I, I believe that'd be a dot force action, but I'm probably wrong. I, I'd have to go through the programming to find that one. So you can do a whole bunch of neat things if you know the programming. Right now, I don't wanna get you guys into programming. Just know that that works. I can make a skill based off agile, by the way. So my agility times six minus the defense rate of the enemy i can name that thief thief blow boom so applies the user's agility instead of their attack And I could even make it ignores defense. So, just a flat attack based on your defense. I'd obviously want to change this to damage. A.agile times six. To the blow instead of their attack. Or defense looks good. Uh, I would just change it to none. All in it. Well, one enemy. Uh, set it all up, and it's good. So there's just some of the things we can do. Formula is pretty simple. If I just hover my mouse over this, we can get some cool stuff. And I promise, in a later tutorial, we'll really delve into some of the awesome stuff you can do with formula. But for now, this is good. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial. Learning skills is pretty awesome. You can do some really cool stuff with them. In fact, a lot of the awesome stuff you can do, you might use skills. For. With that, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what tutorial you might want to see, what you're hoping to learn. Just, uh, really, just tell me maybe even what game you're working on or anything like that. Thanks. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.